Greetings family, this talk today is entitled, God Plays Dice with the Universe. Once again, this talk today is entitled, God Plays Dice with the Universe. So let us begin. So the primary purpose of this talk is to discuss how probability and statistics is perhaps the most prevalent mathematics that governs our lives in the universe. The secondary purpose of this talk is to provide other examples to further reinforce the validity of scientists making allegories, analogies, metaphors, similes, and parallels between scientific concepts to philosophies and the theological concept of God. I will discuss the second point first so that the majority of this talk will be dedicated to the primary purpose of discussing the role of probability and statistics in our lives in the universe. So I will start the discussion off by telling a story from the history of science. So let's go back to the early 1900s. Up to that point in the history of physics, the mathematics and Newtonian mechanics and classical physics that had been used to describe natural phenomenon at the macroscopic scale had all been deterministic, meaning not based on probability or randomness. Even Albert Einstein's famous equation for mass energy equivalence, E equals MC squared, was itself deterministic. However, from Albert Einstein's Nobel Prize winning discovery of the law of the photoelectric effect, there was a new field of study emerging in the early 1900s called quantum physics. While most of the universe is deterministic and measurable, quantum mechanics says that behind everything, there is a world of tiny particles that is governed by total randomness. And thus, the mathematics used in quantum physics needed to account for the uncertainty and randomness through probability and statistics that occur on the quantum scale. Now, Albert Einstein did not like the probabilistic nature of quantum physics and wrote a letter to the top scientists in quantum physics where he made his famous quote, God does not play dice with the universe. Einstein would then write another letter to clarify his original statement where he tried to reconcile the probabilistic with the deterministic in which he said God tirelessly plays dice under laws which he himself has prescribed. After receiving repeated attacks by Einstein, the Danish scientist Niels Bohr, who helped in the development of the new quantum theory, replied to Einstein by saying, stop telling God what to do. Now I tell that story because it serves as a perfect jumping off point for our discussion about the probabilistic nature of our lives in the universe and also provides an example on the validity in making parallels between scientific concepts to the theological concept of God. So when Albert Einstein made his famous quote, God does not play dice with the universe, that quote contains two analogies, allegories, metaphors, or parallels. There is an analogy within the quote between the probabilistic nature of quantum physics to the probabilistic nature of rolling dice, and there is an analogy within the quote between the existing laws of nature and the universe to the theological concept of God. Now let's be clear, Albert Einstein himself did not believe in God as described by religion and theology. However, when Albert Einstein made that famous quote, he did find it necessary to make an analogy, an allegory, a parallel to the concept of God for the purpose of communication. And there are countless examples of scientists who do the same thing, who do not believe in the concept of God, but make parallel to the God concept for the purpose of communication. Please understand, Einstein used the word God in his analogy because of the culture he was communicating to. If Einstein was from Ghana, he would have said Nyami does not play dice with the universe. If Einstein was Yoruba, he would have said Oludumari does not play dice with the universe. If Einstein was Zulu, he would have said Unkulu Kulu does not play dice with the universe. And if Einstein was from Kemet or ancient Egypt, he would have said Atum Ra does not play dice with the universe. The point being that there are countless examples and precedents over the years of scientists making analogies and parallels to the concept of God for the purpose of communication and explanation. Now at this point I would like to add that an analogy, a metaphor, a simile, or parallel all serves as a mental bridge between two concepts. And as you know on a bridge things can travel in both directions. So the purpose for creating that bridge is dependent on who is making the analogies, metaphor, simile, or parallel. In my experience, I have found that scientists make parallels to religious and theological concepts for the purpose of communication and explanation to the average Joe or layperson. 
And I have found that religious people make parallels to science for the purpose of justification of their religious or theological beliefs. My argument to religious people who make parallels to science in order to justify their religious belief is, why not just accept science then? You know, if you have to make parallels between your religious belief to science in order to justify your religion, why not just deal with the subject that you find justification in? Why not just deal with science or have science as your form of religion or spirituality? But with that being said, Einstein's opinion on quantum physics was wrong, and it turns out that probability, randomness, and uncertainty dominate at the quantum level, and that God does in fact play dice with the universe. When faced with the reality of the probabilistic mathematics that exists in quantum mechanics, Einstein was still wrong when he attempted to describe a system of quantum mechanics that was a hybrid of determinism and probability when he made the statement, God tirelessly plays dice under laws which he himself has prescribed. In this analogy, Einstein envisioned God as the metaphorical grand dice maker of the universe, who then rolled the dice that he created, setting in motion a series of random probabilistic events, of which God ultimately knew the outcome of each. Einstein believed in the mathematical laws of nature, so his idea of God was at best someone who formulated the laws and left the universe alone to evolve according to these laws. Einstein shared the opinion of Galileo, who said, the book of nature is written in the language of mathematics, which of course is a retelling of the sentiment expressed in the ancient Egyptian Ahmose's mathematical papyrus that mathematics is the best method of investigation to know all that exists. But while this hybrid of determinism and probability proposed by Einstein has not yet been demonstrated in quantum mechanics, it does seem to appear in our day-to-day -day lives as we will discuss in greater detail later. The irony is that the gods conceptualized by the ancient Africans in Egypt accounted for both the probabilistic and deterministic or subjective and objective aspects of nature. The ancient Egyptian god Nun was a deity of primordial chaos and thus symbolic of the probabilistic or subjective aspect of nature, whereas the ancient Egyptian god Mad was a deity of order and thus symbolic of the deterministic or objective aspect of nature. Even within the West African Ifa tradition, they account for the probabilistic nature of reality by having the Babalawa randomly select one of the Odu of Ifa using the Opele chain 8-bit random number generator. The probability that the Opele chain of the Ifa Babalawa randomly selects one of the Odu of Ifa is 1 over 256 or 0.4%. As mentioned earlier, it does seem that the mathematics of the universe is a combination of determinism and probability. Thus, it makes sense for the aforementioned African systems to have deities or methods of accounting for both the deterministic aspects and the random, uncertain, and probabilistic aspects in nature and the universe. I previously discussed how probability and randomness dominate at the quantum level, and how at the macroscopic level, in the everyday world, the mathematics of classical mechanics which describe events is deterministic. However, the occurrence of events in the universe and the everyday world is described mathematically through probability and statistics. For example, the mathematic equations to fly an airplane are deterministic. However, the mathematic equations describing if your plane will crash or successfully land are probabilistic. The mathematic equations for driving a car are deterministic. But the mathematic equations on if the car will crash are probabilistic. The mathematic equations describing how a meteor falls to Earth are deterministic. However, the mathematic equations on if the meteor will hit the Earth are probabilistic. And we observe this duality of determinism and probability throughout the universe, which is why I say metaphorically that God does in fact play dice with the universe. Even the genetic configuration that makes up you is based on probability. Scientists estimate that there have only been about a hundred billion total human beings that have ever lived, but there are a million trillion trillion total possible combinations of human genes. So your life, the genetic combination that makes up you, was like a lucky roll of the dice. Each of us could be assigned a unique number as a name identifying which combination of human DNA we represent. This perspective really allows me to view all of humanity as a family in that we each emerge as a unique number from the same metaphorical multi-sided dice, which is human DNA. The concept of determinism is akin to the concepts of objectivity and predestination, while the concept of probability is akin to the concepts of subjectivity and free will. So to say that our lives and the universe is a hybrid or combination of determinism and probability is also like saying it's a combination of objectivity and subjectivity or a combination of predestination and free will. 
A good analogy as an example, which illustrates how the duality of these concepts can coexist simultaneously, is a game show where the game show host tells the contestant to pick a prize behind door number one, door number two, or door number three. In this example, the person who designed the game, the person who determined which prize would be placed behind which door, is symbolic of determinism, objectivity, or predestination. And the contestant who has to make the choice of door number one, door number two, or door number three is symbolic of probability, subjectivity, and free will. So your success or failure is based on your ability to beat the odds. So at this point, I want to quickly describe the difference between odds and probability. Probability is the fraction of times you expect to see an event, and the value usually ranges between zero and one. The odds are a ratio of the probability that the event will occur divided by the probability that the event will not occur. So in our example, the probability that you select door number two from the options of door number one, door number two, or door number three is one divided by three or 33.3%. The probability that you will not select door number two is two over three or 66.6%. So the odds of you picking door number two is 33% divided by 66% or 1 divided by 2 or 1 to 2. So we observe that at the quantum scale, things are described by probability. And on the macroscopic scale, things are described deterministically. But the events at the macroscopic scale occur probabilistically. And this mirrors the cosmological and eschatological pattern of spontaneous order or self-assembly arising out of chaos and then eventually over time entropy will increase with things going back towards chaos, disorder, and probability. This is why I believe that if a theory of everything is ever to be derived to unite general relativity with quantum physics, it will have to combine both deterministic and probabilistic features in order to accurately describe this dualistic paradigm that exists in the universe. So may the odds forever be in your favor. Peace.